happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. Genuinely, my heart tells me you're a centrist. Hmm. My heart tells me that I'm a centrist as well. Hmm. Okay, because often in the long term process of content creation, your heart might tell you something, and the whole world might tell you something Correct. else. Correct. Uh, I want to talk about my whole process of creating political content. Hmm. Okay. Now uh, I remember Abhijit Chawla being the first person we had on the show. Hmm. Uh, I do believe Abhijit Chawla is definitely Sorry. slightly right leaning. Okay. Now his episodes took off a lot. Okay. Uh, therefore, I got people who are adjacent to him, both in terms of mindset and views, hmm. and it gave me a very right wing image. Hmm. Uh, I'm genuinely a centrist. I don't have a very very strong political opinion because hmm. I truly believe that we are an outcome of the algorithms in modern day society. The whole social dilemma narrative. Correct. Uh, I also feel as media professionals, you need to be centrist. I say this in so many episodes. Hmm. It's because when you're centrist, you don't have a filter on your eyes and and content requires you to have a lot of clarity on the world correct especially long term content especially this kind of content where it's so raw and so much can go wrong yeah uh so i understood that the if i want to survive in the long term i have to be ethical and a big part of it being ethical is centrism uh now parallelly i get to talk to the politicians from mm. both sides i've had congress mps on the show i've had aap mps on the show i made the mistake of having Four BJP MPs back to back on the show to begin mm. this whole political phase mm. got heavily categorized as a uh, pro BJP BJP bhag uh, bought by BJP mm. this that I've never faced that kind of national level cancellation where mm. dur ke rishte like all my uncles and all are sending me messages saying what have you done son like what's happening they've okay. never even seen my content okay some other pro uh, bjp relative is messaging me saying so proud of you beta <laughs> this is so good <laughs> and i'm like what the f- is happening in my life dude i'm just a podcaster hmm. then i realized my mistake of having four bjp releases back to back obviously it'll categorize you that was me being slightly naive but also motivated about just beginning political podcast hmm. Hmm. uh i've learned a lot about both the bjp and the congress and even the aap Hmm. Uh I have figured that there is capability in all parties. Yeah. It's not like one party is better than the rest. True. But the way the political world is built out for the sake of elections and for the sake of media based numbers, all politicians from all parties are hardwired and trained and coached to hate the other party. Hmm. Parties to the degree where uh they truly hate those political parties from their heart. Really? Oof. bro i've met a few politicians and um, they are very much casual about the kind of hate that is being put out because what they say is that it's not like they never call the mp from a different party and seek advices they seek advices they debate they do everything but when they come out in media they are supposed to be opposite to each other so that the narrative is set My reading is that there's not hate towards specific MPs. Mm. They'll be friends. Mm. They'll be chilling together also, and mm. I know that this is true. Yeah, but they'll hate the political party. Achha. They'll hate the ideologies mm. to the degree where they will even lie <laughs> about the other parties. Hmm. I feel that Congress and AAB do this about BJP, and BJP mm. does this about the other two. Hmm. Like hmm. where they will portray their own media narratives to fuel that narrative, because what's happening through that. a uh, missile of that narrative is that the silos that they've captured hmm. which are the extreme right and extreme left effectively for lack hmm. of better words will get even more <clears throat> into their uh mindset and will likely guarantee votes for them at the time of elections correct season. it is basically pleasing their minimum viable audience yeah yeah their yeah. silos correct and this happens on both sides yeah uh okay this is one thing i have definitely picked up from doing this political podcast that mm. this capability everywhere mm. uh dude anyone in power has access to so much information okay that that information will lead you to likely taking the right calls in terms of hires mm. for example the current government portrays uh, upa as a very failed uh, government which is not true which even the upa uh, brought progress to the country and similarly the congress and ap portrays the current government as a piece of shit which is also definitely not true you know the current true. government has done a lot like i've met people who work with the government like sanjeev sanyal kv yeah. subramanian all these guys uh 
they are very capable men and women man correct so anyone in power especially in india wants the best for the country but it's for the sake of elections that they portray the other one as a piece of shit true and i don't see that changing hmm. uh, unless in some way if we actually have public debates between two parties and have cordial discussions which is not going to happen until i think our generation is at that age where we are in power in politics yeah. maybe that will happen because of a higher sense of collaboration that our generation has thanks to a liberalized economy yeah correct me if i'm wrong if you do that is true and you know bro it's not like every party has the capability to do great things capability exists everywhere but some parties have a flawed philosophy of executing things for example the freebie policy have you heard about freebies yeah so there is merit freebie and there is non merit freebie merit freebie is sponsoring somebody's education so that that person can be uplifted eventually that person will go on to make money let's say the government invests 90000 rupees per year into somebody's engineering education that kid when he graduates he will get a 4.5 lakh job eventually he will lift his family out of poverty after that the government doesn't have to spend on welfare schemes on the family but the other category of politicians this is a merit freebie so there are politicians who give out merit freebies for the development of the society which has a tangible economic output but there are some politicians who will give out random freebies like probably a mixer or let's say laptops and they will portray as if they're giving laptops for the development of the students and those laptops don't work well at all when they do that they do that because with government money with tax payers money they can please an audience and get votes so if you are wasting public money that is bad if you are investing public's money into future economic development that is good like i said they are both philosophies so when somebody gives out a freebie they can justify that and tell you how it will lead to a economic output and sometimes it actually does for example in tamil nadu they gave out tvs and uh, if i ask you on the outset how will tv help generate economic output you'll be like dude this is a waste of money but you know what happened when tvs were given in tamil nadu the women who watched tv serials they began to value themselves more they began to understand feminism more and there was actually a study and i have paid a video on it which says that because of tvs and these tv shows these women they began to prefer having a female child do you see how amazing that is and because even the men of the house started consuming that content they started respecting their wives more so when a party spends money and they have a philosophy it must have a tangible economic output if they do that they can be categorized as a party that is doing a good job but if they use tax payers money to bring out bullshit stories and please the public so that they can get votes i wouldn't define that as a capable party if i tell you that this party is giving out tvs unless you have the data about what has been the impact of tvs you cannot categorize that as a merit freebie or so or a non merit freebie i'll tell you the lafda with data in these political conversations mm. when you take the same a uh, problem statement to both the political parties so say the same problem statement you mm. accuse the ap of having given out freebies for the sake of votes mm. mm. the ap will use data and back their argument mm. in a very detailed way mm. and if you do the same thing with bjp they'll mm. use their data and back their argument in the same way which is the trouble i face as a podcaster correct because people expect me to ask tough questions now if i'm asking an ap mp mm. he's going to or she or she's going to play their playbooks thing mm. which they are trained for mm. and the same thing is going to happen from the bjp side correct and as a podcaster what how do you cross question data there i'm not a journalist mm. firstly i i want other kind of content from them also mm. which is what podcast a podcast are not about bringing forth data or podcast about getting to the heart of the person according to me mm. and i think i have the right to say that because i've been running this podcast for like 4 5 years mm. uh that's the nature of this content mm. so my solution here and i brought this up in a podcast i did with atishi mm. is that dude i hope smriti irani agrees to do a public debate with you mm. and then y'all can sort it out in front of the whole world yeah because when two elephants are wrestling mm. you really kind of get to read between the lines yeah i think another solution to this is also getting data from a neutral organization like rbi 
So we made a video one and a half years back as to why certain freebies are bad for the economy and how states are like becoming mini Sri Lankas in India. During that time, Sri Lankan problem was very popular. So RBS document, and I've actually attached that in the link in the description of that particular video. It has all the details, bro. It has RBS benchmarks. It has what the state is doing and why RBI considers that to be a good thing or a bad thing. So when you take data from a neutral organization like RBI, something as some, some organization which is as credible as RBI, you will get closer to the truth, if not to the absolute truth. My question here is what defines neutrality? Because effectively, even mm. the RBI is run by human beings, each of whom have their own political opinion. True. Like I said, you cannot get to the absolute truth. You can only get closer to the truth, which is why the RBI document, according to me, is the best and perhaps the most credible source to seek that information. Again, if that is skewed or not, I don't know. But the possibility of that being skewed is comparatively less if you compare that to the data that you get from political parties. Okay, fair. Um, I still don't see an out-and-out -out solution here. Mm -hmm. like, like whatever we spoke about as a problem statement that mm -hmm. each party is going to defend themselves mm -hmm. is not uh, solvable. There, there is no solution to this. You know why? Because mobs don't understand nuances. Mm -hmm. Even if they put out the data, even if that data makes sense, how many people will understand that? It will be probably the top 100 million people in the country will understand that. But what about the helper that we have at home? Will they be able to understand these nuances? No. You know, Daniel Kahneman talks about in his book called Thinking Fast and Slow. He talks about system one and system two. So system one is the, is the monkey brain and system two is the scientist. The scientist can understand data, but the monkey can only understand emotions. So when you bring out religion, you appeal to the system one. Mm. When you put out data, you appeal to system two. And in this busy life that we are in, when it comes to something as important as finance, tax and stuff like that, we will, we will apply our system too. But when it comes to other things like politics this and that, we just read headlines here and there and we draw our conclusions. So we operate from the monkey mind mm. and not from the scientist mind. The reason why we are talking about data is because this is our profession. It's our job to read through data points and ask better questions, right? But if you ask our parents, they don't have the time to read so much data. Fair to say that eventually even we'll become our parents. If we are in this profession and we do justice to it, we should not become them. But um, if we don't, then we'll probably become our parents. Somewhere down the line, everybody's operating from system one, bro. You know, there's system one, system yeah. two. We operate with system one and system two all the time. The beauty is you can't predict when you're working with system one, when you're working with system two. The reason why they put out such extreme opinions is so that they can in, they can actually instigate an emotion so that they can appeal to the system one of most people. Because the votes of Ganesh and Ranveer matter just as much as Jyoti and Jyotsna living in a corner of Arunachal Pradesh. Yeah. And there you get quantity. We are nothing like exactly. in the large term scheme of things. Yeah. Are we nothing though? Because I'll tell you what, hmm. maybe this is a bias. Hmm. Totally could be. After this whole conversation uh, about politics and what the general audiences think, mm. I do believe content creators have a stronger role than the public gives us credit for. Mm. As long as the content creator is truly centrist. Yes. We are very, very powerful. We have a lot of responsibility and we have to make sure that we do justice to the power that we've acquired. And if we don't do that, then we will become a different version of the politicians that we already have. Yeah. Now I want to bring back what you said exactly about how if a content creator kind of puts a left of center opinion, then gets hate from the right side, and the right side's hate propels the content creator's emotional heart to become more left-wing. And then eventually he gets, he or she gets stuck in a silo of being anti-Modi or left-wing. It's called confirmation bias. And the same thing would happen to someone who began as center right and wants to say the right thing but then gets pushed into being extreme right and pro, right. extreme pro Modi. We are not able to see the Modi government's flaws. And on this side, you're not able to see the Modi government's uh, positives. Correct. And the same with like UPA, etc. True. 
what do you do as a creator what's the socially responsible thing to do other than constantly be centrist my 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 solution to this is mm. i want to call on people on the show from all sides mm. disagree with me school me try to come to the truth mm. i think the solution to this is debate so we are about to start a business podcast and when we get entrepreneurs to our podcast we will eventually also get politicians to the podcast like i said in think school politics is a very important subject of business when we get politicians to the podcast the ambition i don't know if i'll ever be able to do that is to ask them questions which are backed by data and to tell them that these are the questions that we'll be asking you and you be prepared to answer these questions with data and then let the public decide whether they make sense or not you know karan thapar used to run this show called the devil's advocate mm. where he used to ask very tough questions so the best way to bring out the nuances if not for 1.4 billion people at least for the 100 million people at the top would be to debate and to put out data as much as possible again you will not get to the absolute truth because the world is so complex you will just get a little closer to the truth than you are today firstly as a consumer of things cool i'm very excited about the business <laughs> podcast because there's some kind of layer of wisdom that podcasts bring out of guests true and i use the word wisdom cautiously it's not knowledge and data yeah you you get to see both the monkey brain and the uh, scientist brain correct in podcast uh secondly i mean this is me being the devil's advocate here i would argue that especially bjp politicians and if there's any watching this i'm not accusing you of this i'm i want to live <laughs> like <laughs> uh, but uh, the bjp politicians often don't agree to come out to studios mm. and often dodge mm. difficult questions if they're asked by a kid mm. and if they are uh, i don't see too many journalists asking them difficult questions mm. nowadays because mm. maybe the bjp politicians aren't doing those difficult conversations mm. i would argue that as a citizen of the country it would be better if they do i would request <laughs> please if you can if you can't it's okay <laughs> but this is what i mean and i brought this up with we had nitin gadkari on the show okay and i told him sir you know we scared of you hmm like people are scared of the bjp hmm. what do you have to say to that hmm. and he opened up even more because of it i don't think he opened up to the degree that i would love as a content creator hmm. but he did open up to a very large degree okay and he didn't try just dominating me hmm. on the show which i had felt with other politicians from all parties hmm. there is that hmm. sense of hey i'm a politician i will dominate you true because maybe they have a right to they're the most powerful people in society Hmm. I don't think they have the right to because they are after all answerable. It is their duty to be answerable. And if they refrain from doing that, I don't think they are utilizing the power the right way. Yeah, maybe. So while playing devil's advocate to you, hmm. uh and I hope that when you start bringing politicians on the show, this trend of them calling you to Lutians in Delhi hmm. changes and they come to the studios. Yeah. to sense the energy to sense that we're not coming from a bad place of accusation we're coming from a place of education yeah uh because i think they're so used to journalists accusing them because journalists also stuck in those silos after years of doing what they are doing they don't do respectful questioning bro yeah that's the problem you know when it comes to smita prakash ma'am if you look at her podcast she asks questions which are respectful and here's where the fine line between disagreement and hate comes in you know if i don't agree with your content doesn't mean i have to hate you with journalists that is a problem i don't know how they're supposed to be trained for that when they disagree with somebody they will try to pin them down you know you ask questions to understand or you ask questions to pinpoint they ask questions to pinpoint as a result the politician has to give them a fitting reply but if they ask questions to understand which is what Smita Prakash ma'am does to a large extent it brings out the best version of that particular politician because now that person is not speaking like a politician he's speaking like a human being trying to make you understand yeah yeah my my hope is that they start coming to our studios yeah to which will lead to better conversations better mm. education it will also lead to you know what again i'm just using the bjp as an example you mm. the bjp currently is heavily rejected by a significant part of urban india mm. as compared to the rest of our population which lives outside of urban mm. india it's a very tiny sliver 
in the large scheme of things mm. now that sliver are the people that i have grown up with mm. who just accuse the bjp of everything they've just rejected the bjp out and out they think that mm. the bjp can't do any good mm. uh and they also categorize me in that same category now because i had those four back to back podcasts i don't even think they'll see my milan deura podcast or my av podcast mm-hmm. they just think that now oh this guy's kind of a social bjp he's gone correct yaar you are as bad as the people you claim to hate correct which are those anbhaks and all. you're also an anbhak of an other kind correct um the horseshoe magnet theory that the ends of magnet are actually closer to each other than the center yeah uh i hope and pray that when those politicians come to my studio or your studio mm we can have slightly more centrist opinions True. i don't think it's the scientifically correct thing to do to be on an extreme you, mm-hmm. you have to at least listen correct you can't just jump to the conclusion that the modi government is extremely good or extremely bad yeah i see this a lot with our parents generation i don't blame them because they are the generation that was fed so much news over decades yeah. you don't even know the narratives <laughs> they have in their head correct but it's a request to everyone from our generation yeah do you see that around you like our friend circles people our age bro my friend circle is extremely wise they study data and that is also because they are all entrepreneurs and they have to understand politics to be able to make better business decisions so all my friends they are very smart and because they study data they also understand the nuances so they are pretty chill what i'm worried about are the college students who have no idea where data is who have no idea how to study data so if they start having extreme opinions they will be blindsided to both the good things and the bad things so if somebody hates the modi government by default they will never appreciate the infrastructural development the digital india initiative the upi type thing that they have come up with and they've executed well at the same time if they blindly follow modi ji if the government does something that is not good they won't be able to see it as a result they will be in chaos and they wouldn't even know so when you are pro something it does have incentives like you know you have more aspirations you have more hope you have more faith in the government which is very important at the same time you're also ignoring a lot of things which will again result into a disaster so in this movie called air there is this statement which says that when you are a nobody people would want you to succeed and they will celebrate you and one day you will become a star but the problem with becoming a star is that now people will hold you accountable so that you keep on scoring 40 points a game and the moment you stop doing that people will start thrashing you and they will bring you down so it is always a curve for some time you are the underdog suddenly you go from underrated to overrated and then people will bring you down that happened with congress that will happen with every other party which will go on to become significant but the ultimate question is what does the bottom of the pyramid think because that's where the actual winning criteria is if you could appeal to the bottom of the pyramid if somebody who is making 15000 rupees is able to survive in this world better because you controlled inflation they will eventually vote for you or you speak to their monkey mind Hmm. and make it about religion yes i do not want to say this i'll say it <laughs> <laughs> that's not ganesh that's so ranveer if you improve the that's so there are two parts to it one is you improve the economics of the bottom of the pyramid and second is you improve the social security of the bottom of the pyramid so if they are made to feel safer in the india that they live in as compared to the india that they lived in they will eventually vote for you so now you could do that in two ways either you could be extremely radical and you could tell them that you know if you want to survive that means you'll have to go and attack somebody or you could go the other way around that is you could ask people to accept other people in the society better so that you could build a society that is more optimized for harmony than for conflict that is exactly what lee kuan yew did in singapore by the way what he did was he told everyone that we will not have separate neighborhoods we will have all types of people all four categories of people in the same neighborhood in the same goddamn building so that you guys learn to humanize each other and you treat each other as brothers and sisters and not as rivals because our war is not against each other it is against the world if we don't stand up for each other the world is going to discard us 
So if that mindset is inculcated at the bottom of the pyramid, it will take decades of time. I think the world will be a better place. But then all of this is just idealistic bullshit. The reality is far different from that. Mm. So social security and economic security is the ultimate combination to get the votes from the bottom of the pyramid. You know, I wonder how much this Singapore case study because of the differences in the two sizes of the countries applies to India. Mm. Because I have noticed that whether it's actual politicians or people going about political banter, uh, lots of folks bring up the size of the nation situation. Mm. My personal opinion is that maybe only actual people in governance and administration have actual intel on how difficult or how easy it is to run such a big country. True. Not easy, but how difficult it is to run such a big country. Correct. Maybe that's why I don't know how much we can truly learn from Singapore. Hmm. Especially when it comes to this whole communal tension angle that we are talking about. So if you enjoy this video, subscribe to TRS Clips for more.